Hey everyone, it's Ryan here, and today I'm talking about the Canon 24mm pancake lens with a f-stop of 2.8. So just keep in mind in the duration of this video that I'm talking in regards to my camera, which is an APS-C camera. So it has a crop of about 1.6. So this 24mm lens is going to end up being more about a 40 millimeter lens. I don't even know if they have a 40 millimeter, but that's what it ends up being about. So um, let's just jump right on into it. So as I said, this lens has an f-stop of 2.8. That means that it's going to give you really nice bokeh. It's not as nice as the 1.4 or the 1.8 uh, such as on the 50 millimeter lens that Canon has, but I mean it's still pretty good um, I will show some images that I took with it a little bit later You'll see what I mean with the bokeh the focal length on this lens is about a half a foot or six inches I don't know what that is in centimeters, but either way it's about that about that far so you can get about that close to whatever you're taking a picture with with this lens and it will be in focus but you know obviously if you get a little bit closer than that it's not going to work one thing to keep in mind is that this is indeed a macro lens on a full frame camera it would definitely give you like a, a macro look like you'll have a little bit a little bit of a distortion not like almost kind of like a fisheye lens but not quite a fisheye lens it's like somewhere in between a fisheye and like a normal looking lens because it is a macro lens but with my APS-C camera with that crop you you don't really notice much of a um, much distortion or anything basically all that it does is just kind of zoom in your frame a little bit that's about it this lens does have autofocus and from what I have experienced just from the uh, couple of weeks I've been using it the autofocus on it is pretty quick I can not now my camera does not take fast burst pictures it takes five photos in one second and even then this can keep up and keep things in focus with relative ease and then also you will see later I will kind of give like a little bit of a demonstration with like using this like using this lens as like a vlogging lens or whatever and you'll see that it keeps me in focus fairly fairly easy like it I don't get lost in any like at all with that focus I mean that's just kind of something that works with Canon cameras and their lenses but yeah I was in focus the entire time anyways moving on to the next thing this lens does not have image stabilization so that would give you problems in regards to photography and videography and I'll get to those after I'm done talking about the specs one thing that's really good on these specs though is that the part that you attach to your camera that is made out of metal it's not plastic so it's solid and it, it doesn't feel cheap I mean you paid about $150 if you get this lens so it, it better not be cheap so that's really nice that it is indeed metal so you know just a little bit better quality product with that being said everywhere else on the lens is plastic I mean you only paid 150 bucks for this lens but at least I got the attachment part the part that's probably gonna experience the most wear and tear other than the focus ring uh, at least they made that metal now because this is a very small lens it is very light uh, I've seen people in other videos chunking these things around well $150 to me it's a lot of money I'm not gonna be chunking this around but it is indeed light like once you have it on your camera you don't really even notice that it's there uh, that can be a good and bad thing so now talking about my personal opinions about it in regards to photography now a lot of people will say that especially on a full frame camera that the nifty 50 or 50 millimeter lens is probably the best portrait lens to use because it kind of gives it the most natural looking look to the image like your face looks normal it's not warped or anything and, and it just gives like the most natural background or whatever that's what most people say but if you're like me and you have the APS-C camera where it's cropped in a little bit and this puts it at about 40 millimeters close enough to 50 the images look pretty much how it would be if you're just looking through the viewfinder like when I took these pictures both of my girlfriend and the, some flowers and stuff like that that's what it looked like when I was looking through the viewfinder on my camera so 
the uh, 24 millimeter on a crop sensor to me it looks very similar to what a 50 millimeter lens would look like on a full frame camera it's not going to be exact but it's it's fairly similar and then as you can see in the images it is very sharp and one thing that i like about the, this lens from when i was uh taking pictures with my girlfriend is it was a rainy cloudy dark day and we were doing kind of a little bit of a challenge where we were taking pictures at Lowe's and we were trying to be creative with it and you know getting some of the plants or whatever and just looking at these images honestly you can't tell that we were at a Lowe's you'd think that we were just outdoors but no like 10 like 50 feet from us there was like a, a friggin forklift so no we took these pictures at Lowe's we were just kind of doing a little bit of a challenge with it and it was dark in there like there was uh, awnings and everything covering all the plants and whatnot so it was dark but with this lens having a 2.8 f-stop I mean, you, you can't really tell. I mean, yeah, the images might be slightly dark, but, and they might be slightly grainy, but I mean, overall, I was pretty content with the pictures. And as you can see in this image in particular, this F2.8 does give relatively good bokeh. As you can see, the foreground uh, is slightly blurred out, and then obviously the background is extremely blurred out. Focusing on my girlfriend and then a little bit of the pink flowers that she is smelling. So, I mean, I honestly feel like this image just gives the best example of good bokeh from this lens that I, I can show you and from what I have in my little stock of pictures that I've taken with it using the 24 millimeter lens. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind using this for photography is again, it does not have image stabilization built in. So you'll have to do one of three things. You either have to use a very steady hand, you know, be using your camera strap or bracing or, or whatever it is that you need to do, or just simply use a tripod or use a very fast shutter speed so that way you know even if you do move it's such a fast shutter speed it don't matter but either way you will have to have some stability to help when you're taking pictures with this and as i mentioned before because the f-stop is fairly low so you can really open up the aperture you can take pictures in dark places and get more light than um so that way you can kind of decrease some of that iso and uh, not have quite as grainy pictures in darker areas yeah, that, that's all I have to really say about photos, so let's move on to videography. Now, for videos, I kind of explained it a little bit in the little clip that I, I made earlier. I just want to get like a little quick example of using uh, the 24 millimeter pancake lens for some video. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly go over everything because I kind of say the same thing in that video, but just some important things that you need to know about using a 24 millimeter on your camera for video. It is right on the threshold of being good or being bad for vlogging. Um, I would say that you could definitely use it to vlog. It's just, it's kind of on the bad side and the fact that like your face is right there. Like it looks like the, the camera is just like boom, right on your face. You can still see a little bit of the background, but not enough. That's one thing I would say that even my kit lens has an advantage of because it can go down to 18 millimeter. Uh, so you can just see a little bit more. It's not quite in your face. So maybe if you got like a, a 10 millimeter lens or something, but those are extremely expensive compared to this, which was uh, the 24 millimeter lens, which was only um, $150 on Amazon, which by the way, I will be having this lens and other equipment that I'd use linked down below in the description. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, I have the links to Amazon there. So, but anyways, moving on. So when I was making the video, the little clip, I left the f-stop at 2.8 so that way you can see all the boco when I was making the video okay so I was gonna be walking around on the dirt road that's kind of behind my house just that way but we've been having a lot of rain so it's real muddy so I'm just gonna be walking around so that way you all can see what it's like when you don't have image stabilization that's on the lens I have the camera set on aperture priority so I'm sorry if it doesn't look super fluid or anything like that but when I had the frame rate set at the recommended frame rate <clears throat> it was just way 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 too bright outside um, way overexposed so I'd rather the image look a little bit better and be a little bit jittery than um, just be completely blown out and completely overexposed but anyways as you can see 
there is a good amount of shake that comes from this lens since it doesn't have image stabilization. It's not terrible because I'm walking on a flat surface, but you can definitely tell that's there. I got my camera on a Gorilla Pod extended out in front of me, so I'm trying to reduce shake as much as possible, but it's still gonna be there. Second thing is, since it is on a crop sensor, and it's acting more like a 40 millimeter lens, I don't know if they have a 40 millimeter lens, but that's about what it would be. You can tell that, like, my face is just right in front of the lens. Like, it's holding my arm out as far as possible, like way out here. Uh, my face is, it just seems like I'm right in front of the lens. Like, you can't see a whole lot behind me. But, the stuff that is behind me, it's very blurred out or whatever. Um, so I can get a little bit more focused on me. If, it, if I was someplace else where I wanted to share a little bit more of my surroundings, then I would drop the, or I would increase the f-stop, make the whole of the video a little bit lower so that way you can see everything behind me. And then I would also be allowed to uh, be in a little bit normal frame rate so that way it won't seem jittery or anything. I don't know if it is in post, but I just wanted to share what it looked like recording in this camera without um, having it on a tripod or something like that. So if you're recording indoors or something, just use a tripod, that'd make it a lot easier. Things won't be shaking around quite so much and it would just look a lot nicer. My only complaints with this lens is that the focus ring is right on the end of the lens and it's a very small lens. So whenever you're trying to focus with the ring and keep in mind you gotta have it on manual focus not auto focus uh, because that will lead me into my next point here in a second but whenever you're trying to focus with the ring a lot of times your finger will get into the view because the the ring is right at the end of the camera and it's so small that again a lot of times your finger will end up like slipping into the frame or something and then because it's also small it's sometimes hard to control and you just can't get things into focus as quick but as I was kind of alluding to just a second ago, you gotta really be careful and have it on manual focus when you use the ring because I've heard people saying that if you leave it in autofocus and you use that ring, you can really screw up your autofocus to the point that it's not working anymore. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. So in conclusion, this is a very good lens to be having, especially if you have APS-C crop sensor like I do on my Canon SL2. Uh, that means that you'll be getting closer to around what a 40 millimeter is because if you're using a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter or the nifty 50 it's going to end up being about an 80 millimeter lens and that's kind of ridiculous unless you want to like be standing really far away from the camera uh, if you're using it to record or if you really want to stand far away from your subject if you're taking pictures but anyways uh, I feel like this is definitely worth the $150 that you pay for it I mean, that's relatively cheap for lenses. Um, I think that the build quality definitely matches uh, the price point that you pay for it. And the images that you can get out of it definitely is worth the money that you pay for it. Because I do feel like my images are better with this 24 millimeter than with the kit lens that I have on right now for this recording. It does suck that you don't have image stabilization in there, but I mean, you only paid $150. If you wanted a 24 millimeter lens that has image stabilization, you're gonna have to pay a lot more money. So yeah, that's just kind of my review of the 24 millimeter lens, especially in regards to the APS-C crop sensor cameras, such as my SL2. Um, there's definitely a crap ton of videos out there about lenses with full frame cameras. I I know that there's definitely other videos out there about the APS-C crop sensor cameras, but I just kind of wanted to throw my little opinion in there because some people, they're so used to, I, like other people that make YouTube videos, I feel like they're so used to having better equipment that they kind of frown on this or whatever, but if you're just starting out, this is definitely a lens to get and add to your collection because again, only $150 is much better than spending like a thousand plus on the same type of lens essentially. I mean, I don't really know what to say uh, after that, but again, I'll have all this stuff linked down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you have anything to contribute or to refute or whatever, just be sure to comment down below. I read all my comments and I enjoy having my audience engage with me. Um, and if you really enjoy what I have to say and you like other content on my uh, channel and everything, just feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon. 
Uh, I heard that YouTube changed it. <laughs> they keep changing stuff. So when you hit that bell icon, be sure to get the alerts where it's on always, not just sometimes. So that way you can get any other videos I'm gonna be making. Cause the next one will be a review about the 50 millimeter nifty 50 Canon lens on the APS-C crop sensor camera. Uh, I hope to have that out next week or the week after because next week is finals. I'll finally be done for about a month before summer classes start. Anyways, I hope that y'all have a great day. I'll see y'all next time.